Hello, I'm Luke Westaway for CNET reporting from the 3D Print Show in London, where some of the most exciting, jaw-dropping and futuristic tech is being shown off. Let's take a look. For the uninitiated, 3D printers work by taking data from a virtual computer design model, then building that model slice by slice into an actual object. Items built using this process can be incredibly detailed and, if you print one piece at a time, can even feature moving parts. Here on show today are some seriously impressive printed marvels, including musical instruments, toys and even items of clothing. Where do you see this eventually going fashion-wise? Do you think in 10 years' time we're all going to be walking around wearing plastic clothes and, <laughs> and uh, rubber trousers? I hope. Oh, well, I, maybe some of us in the streets of London, but hopefully not everyone. No, I think it's going to be integrated both in direct 3D manufacturing, so in 3D printing, but probably as it is already being used for sampling. Okay, so you know, we can test the design, you know, see what it looks like, talk about it, and then put it into manufacturing. The flexibility of 3D printing means designers can really go to town. There are loads of very unusual styles on show here, I've noticed, especially when it comes to jewellery. So you designed this ring. How exactly did you design it? What software did you use? Um, I used a, a program called Poser first. It's an animation program with pre-generated human figures. And uh, from that, I shaped the hands, uh, which are clasping a ball of human hair, where I smoothed it out, made it look more organic, more human, rather than um, ridden with polygons. So I managed to get it to not look so digital. So. This technology isn't just for hobbyists, it's even finding a home in Hollywood. Meet Iron Man's mask and articulated gauntlet. So tell me about the glove. How exactly has this been made? So. Um this is the glove from the second movie, from Iron Man 2, so we revisited and tried to change the technique from the first movie, so we 3D scanned Robert's hand and then took the design and wrapped around his proportions and came up with all the articulation. And then we broke it down and printed it out on an object that was then uh, cleaned up, metal etched, and uh, basically nickel plated and painted from there and fully assembled and it's a functioning gauntlet. Glitz and glamour aside, there's plenty of evidence here that 3D printing has scientific applications as well. This incredibly detailed physical model of an ancient cat skeleton was created by scanning the animal's mummified remains. Meanwhile, full 3D body scans like this one give a clear picture of someone's physical makeup, something that could come in handy when designing prosthetic limbs. Uh, so what are some of the advantages of using 3D printing for prosthetics? I think it's uh, the essence of form, fit and function. Uh, fit because you get a perfect fit from scan to print. Uh, form because you get to restore symmetry for people which emotionally we find is equally as important as the physical function and finally the performance lightweight durable high impact allows people to play football to run to climb to really restore a meaningful way of life. So what's the future of 3D printing? Well amazingly from what I've seen it looks like it could be objects that design themselves. So if I'm not mistaken a computer actually designed this object is that right? Yes this is correct this is um, designed without designer interaction. The geometry was created by a topology optimization algorithm from a set of load criteria and what happened was that the computer basically decided where to put which element of geometry, resulting in a, a sort of biologically looking component. A trait shared by this 3D printed concept house, which was also designed by a computer algorithm. So this thing doesn't look like any building I've ever seen, but you're saying that this is actually a concept for a house? Yeah, this is the very first prototype for a completely 3D printed house. We wrote our own uh, algorithm that is able to arrange material on, a, on um, almost like in nature. It's almost creating kind of bone-like structure that is extremely lightweight because it's, it's actually using the same algorithms of nature. It almost, yeah, it's actually almost building itself. Yes. What does that mean for architects in the future? I mean, we are, we are kind of playing, playing with the algorithm and curating the algorithm. Uh, we, we're obviously still in charge of, uh, of the algorithm. It, it's, it's not taking over yet. Yet. <laughs> yes. If that's not an omen of the robot apocalypse, I don't know what is. For more on 3D printing, check out CNET and let me know what you'd like to see crafted by robots in the comments below. I'm Luke Westaway and this is the 3D Print Show in London.